Hello, uh, so this is our first slide that uh, machine learning class. Uh, as I said, we will use a uh, ripe mind allowed in this class. Uh, so before we start, uh, I, I would highly recommend that we create a folder on your local computer um, so that you can organize all the data, all the projects of this class uh, into a single folder. So later on, we want to re review what you have done. You can find out where your data is. Uh, so although uh, you may work from home or you may uh, not have access to GMU, but I still highly recommend that we use our OneDrive folder as our working folder. So here you can see I have installed OneDrive app and I already logged in with, uh, with my GMU account. Um, and then here I will create a new folder so that everything that will be uploaded to the OneDrive um, so I can access that in the cloud. So I will call it i340 2024. All right. Um, uh, so here, uh, if you don't want to use OneDrive, that's fine. Uh, as long as you can find a place that on your local computer and you can find where you're can you will you're going to save your data in that folder. So. Um, within that folder, I'm going to create another folder, so that will for the ripe miner. Okay, so this will be my folder that um, everything that uh, from ripe miner will be saved here. All right, so I copy and paste this path. And then let's start uh, the ripe miner. So hopefully you all have installed the ripe miner with a student license. Uh, so this is the interface. Uh, this uh, so this is the welcome um, page, and we can close that one. And so now this is the interface of the uh, ripe miner. Uh, so make sure that we're using you are using the right version. So here I'm using Studio. 9.7. I believe that is the latest version that when I downloaded the right miner. Um, so hopefully you are using the same version as I did. Um, and also make sure you are using the your education license. So if you check your license, you can see here I'm using my education license, which I can have unlimited data roles and also I have unlimited logic proce processors. And normally, the education license will be valid for one year. And as long as you are a student or you are a faculty, uh, you can renew your license every year. So that's that's pretty nice. OK, uh, so let's look at the interface. So let's start from the top. So the top are just the, the common uh, menu bars where you, you can save your process. So um, um, process is is uh, contain a set of the operators, so that basically is a uh, each process will represent a model that you designed for your data. Uh, you can also in load import data, etc., and uh, you can edit, cut, paste, etc., uh, and also you can control your process, and we will see that one later. And you can, uh, if you sometimes if you uh, happen closed some. Uh, windows and if you want uh, resort to the default window so you can go to view and also resort default view and if you have some database that you can want to connect uh, you can here manage your connections um, and also settings so basically this is where you can manage your uh, license uh, and also extensions so right manner you can also install the other extensions so we will see that one later and also help information, so tutorial, and also Right Mind Academy, which I highly recommend. So they have a lot of free resources. And um, I also have a concise version of the Right Miner tutorials on YouTube. Uh, so if you're interested, and you can check that tutorial. Um, I also have a tutorial on GitHub. OK, uh, so then repository. So repository is uh, it, it is similar on, on GitHub, the repository, so um, you can organize, so each repository is for one project, and so for example, for our, for our semester, we can create one repository, 
where we can organize all our models in that repository. Within each repository, you can have multiple processes, so you can train your models and you can also save your data. Um, and here, those are the, on the bottom, those are the operators. So operators are, are the tools that RapidMiner provided, so where you can access the data, uh, you can clean your data, and you have they provide a lot of great uh, tools. Um, like different prediction machine learning tools uh, and also you can validate your data like cross validation split validation and also this is the way you can identify your extensions so if you install some extension from here and those will be showing up here in the middle that is where you can design your process so again that is where you can design your models um, so right now we are in the design view and once you have some result, and once you process your run your models, so it will be, uh, it will bring you to the result view. So right now it's empty. Uh, and also the prep, this is also a great tool so that we can help you clean your data uh, and also do some data cleaning part and also feature general, gen, uh, generalization, feature engineering, sorry, feature engineering etc so that is high uh, that is great tools we will see that one um, in the next week auto model is another very powerful function on rapid miners basically we bring your data and also rapid miner will select the best model we will we'll, we'll conduct a set of the right, uh, machine learning models and they will report accuracy and you can choose which model you like so we will see this one later this semester Deployment is also a new function, so that means once you have a model ready, you can deploy that one to the production uh, immediately. Okay, uh, so let's go back to design view. And on the right side, you can see that those are the parameters. So those will depend on what you select. So if you select your data and also you select your operators, so uh, uh, the parameters will be different. So that's really depending on what you selected. And at the bottom, so those are the help information, so that uh, so like, uh, it will provide help for the for the parameters or the operators you selected. Okay, so those are some very helpful information. Um, at the bottom, at the bottom, so those are the recommended operators. So this is another very great feature. So that basically means that depending on the current stage of your process that what are the next popular operators people are doing so right now you can see uh, the process is empty so you can see the highest uh, recommended operator is retriever so bring your data to the process so because that is the most cases that is the number one step that bring your data to the process so depending on the stage of your uh, modeling process, so you will see the different recommendations. Okay. All right, so that's the interface of the RapidMiner Studio. So let's first create our repository. And also uh, through this entire semester, we are going to use that single repository. So let's click here. Uh, let's create a new repository. And you can connect your repository to the cloud, um, but here we're going to create a new repository locally. And remember that we're going to create, create a repository and save data into this folder that I just created. So I save that one to a OneDrive folder. So we are going to create a, a repository locally. And I don't want to use the default location, but instead um, I just copy and paste the location that I just created, the new folder I created in my uh, OneDrive folder. And I call it i340-2024. Um, okay. Uh, you can also browse. You can browse uh, uh, the data that if you like and if that's the way that you prefer. But I just simply copy uh, the data, the, the folder name here. And then I create finish. 
And now you can see here I have a new repository that is created and which is in the local. And if you expand that repository, and right now it only contains connections, I don't have any connections. So it is empty. Okay, so now we have our repository. So next, uh, let's create a new subfolder. So let's uh, for our first lab. So let's create a new subfolder beneath the repository. So let's call it lab one. Okay, so subfolder will help us to organize uh, your, your, your data and also your process in your repository. Okay, so lab one. And if you go back to your rep manner, you can see, okay, so now I have lab one that is created. Um, next, we are going to download the data. So uh, if you review the instructions, uh, so the instruction contains a URL that where you can find out your data. Uh, again, I put all my data, all the data to my GitHub, uh, right minor repository on GitHub. Uh, so here you can find out all my, a lot of tutorials so that we are going to go through all those tutorials. So where you can see the process, how the process look like. Uh, and if you click that, you can see the process uh, look like, and you can download the process. And also you can watch the demo video. So the demo video will be will be much shorter than this one. Uh, so the data we are going to use is a diamonds Excel file. So if we click that one, and then we can see download. So we can download the diamonds from the GitHub. Again, the URL is in the lab instruction. And then we save it. Uh, so by default, it is saved in my uh, downloads folder. So let's try to organize everything in one place. So I just move the diamonds Excel file from a downloads folder and into my right minor live lab one folder. Okay. So I just downloaded the data into my diamonds into my uh, lab one folder. And then if I go back to uh, di uh, right minor, and we know that Excel file is now in this folder. Uh, so if you refresh, okay, and you can see, okay, right, uh, Excel file is now in this, uh, right is now loaded in right minor. Uh, that's pretty nice. I, I mean, it, uh, I'm quite surprised because uh, in the past version, the Excel file cannot be recognized. Um, and now you can drag the data directly into the into your design view. So let's say if we drag the data directly. Okay, so now can, you can see the file is now dragged into the design view. And you can see there's a uh, the half dot, the tiny dot here. That means this is the output of this operator. So this is an operator. Uh, and now you can see at bottom, so those recommended operator now has changed. So retriever is no longer the, the number one. The number one is actually the read the CSV file. Okay. Uh, and now you, if you want to see the result, so if you run the data, nothing will happen because you can see here, uh, there's nothing that is connected to the result. Okay. So what we need to do is that we drag, we click this dot from this operator, and we drag that one to this result dot. And now if if I run it, okay, so it looks like a recommend still cannot recognize a CSV file, a Excel file directly. So they can tell you where the location is. Okay. Uh, that's nice. So looks like they have the open file operator. Okay. Uh, so so if we want to import the data into right minor, because right now CSV Excel file is not the uh, default uh, data format. So what we can do is that we already we have our, although we have Excel file, we need to import the data. So what we can do is that we can import the data. Okay, and you can tell what where your data is. Is that in a database, or is that in a local computer? 
So if you choose local computer and then you can browse to this Excel and you can import the data from Excel into RapidMinder. And by doing that, RapidMinder will be able to recognize the Excel file. But that is not one the way that I want to use. What I want is I want to use a data report, uh, an operator that is called read Excel file. So if you type read, uh, you can see here in the data access folder and in the read, you can see they provide, Rapid provide a lot of operators that they can read data from different data resources like CSV, Excel, Stata, SPSS, um, XML, and also Access. Okay, so those are reading data from different resources, data formats. Um, and also you can read data from database, and also you can also even write data back to an Excel file. And you can also read data from the cloud storage like uh, AWS, uh, and also I think Dropbox, uh, Google Cloud Storage. Those are pretty cool. Okay, so let's import the data by using the operator. So instead of using this import uh, function, so let's read Excel file. We drag this one. Okay, uh, so here you can see we can tell where you can see the parameters has changed. So you can tell where the Excel file is located. Or you can use this import configure wizard. Okay, so let's use this import configuration wizard. And let's say we want to go to my OneDrive. And we know that the data is saved into my I uh, 480 ripe manner lab one. Okay, so we select that Excel file. Okay, and now you can see that it, how many uh, now Excel file has loaded all the columns. I only have one single sheet, so the sheet I load it the the diamond sheet has been uh, imported. And next, okay. So this is the reason that why I want to use the read Excel file operator because by using this one, uh, RightMiner is very smart. They are able to understand. Okay, so the first row contains the column name, so they extract the column name from the first row, and all the remaining rows will be the data. Okay, and we can see there are no problems. And also, you can see RapidMinder can recognize the data, ty data type. So the first column is called ID. So those are numbers and also those are integers. And the second one are the weight of those diamonds. And those are recognized as the real number or the double or float. The third one is the color of the diamonds. And they recognize as polynomial. So those are nominal data or categorical data. Uh, and the same for the clarity and also reader. Okay, so those are all categorical data. The last one uh, is a price of all the diamonds. So because those are whole numbers, so those are integer. Okay, so that's perfect. And I say finish. Okay, and now you can see the escalation mark is gone. Um, and we have output. And we can connect that one to our result window. And now let's write. OK, so now we can load the data into the result window. So you can see here we have all the results. Um, that how the table look like. Uh, you can also apply the filters, see if you have any missing values, missing attribute. Uh, you can also sort the data. OK. Uh, or you can open the data in the auto model, or you can use uh, open the data in the turbo prep to do the data cleaning or to do the data machine learning uh, directly. Uh, you can also see the very brief statistics, and also you can create visualizations. Okay, so those are very pretty cool stuff, and we will talk those stuff in the next week. Okay, so let's go back to our design view. So. We can see that right now the Excel file has been imported into RapidMinder. 
And we also know that RapidMiner cannot use Excel file directly. So you have to import it into RapidMiner, and then you can use the data. So if you want to save the data into the format that RapidMiner can use directly, and you can do that. So what you can do is that you can try to type save. OK, and you can see um, there's a the stall operator so that it can save all the data into the format that right miner can recognize. So let's bring the stall here. You can the, st the stall data, the stall operator requires an input. So input should be the data that has already been loaded into the right miner. So let's uh, disconnect this one. And now let's say, okay, the, the loaded Excel file will be fed into the stall operator. And specifically, you have to tell where do you want to store the data. So I want to store the data into the same repository and also into the same folder. And this one, I call it the diamond. And I click OK. OK, and now you can see the data will be saved here. OK, um, and we have warning, but um, that's fine. Uh, so now you can see if you run the data, if you run the process. So right now we have a process. OK, nothing happened uh, because we don't have any. We, do, we have nothing that is connected to the result window. But instead, we have this diamonds. OK, so now we can see that this diamond now has been created and saved into our local repository. So this data, you can drag that one directly into Ripe Miner. And if you connect that one to our result window, and you can see the data directly. OK. Uh, so to do that, let's first let's disable those two operators, because you don't want to overwrite your current existing uh, data set. So we can disable those two operators. OK. And we just run this one. Now you can see you can now be able to save the data. OK. So we just loaded the data from Excel file into RapidMiner. And also we save that one by using the stall operator. And now we can retrieve the data from the uh, stored uh, data set into RapidMiner directly. OK. Uh, so before we move on, let's save our current process. So right now we have process. The process has this operator that is active and that we have those the other operators that are disabled. So let's save the process, but click this, this save. Make sure that the lab one folder is selected and we save that. OK, uh, it still asks that where do you want to save the, the current process? Uh, so let's say we OK, so we want to save to this folder and let's call it lab one process. OK, so now you can see the lab one process is saved. OK, uh, you can also save process as different uh, in different locations. So that is how we can import data from the uh, existing CSV file, and also we can save the data into a format that we can use that one directly in RapidMiner. Uh, next, RapidMiner also provides some other great tools that you can collect data directly from social media or from um, a different website. So let's say we want to collect some Twitter. If you type Twitter, and you can see you have they have Twitter search operator. So if you remember that we have done this lab in the 340, so we use a, a, a Twitter API in Python. Uh, but now we are using Rep Miner, so Rep Miner allow, allow us to search, collect Twitter directly without using Python. So you can collect Twitter, select tweets, you can select tweet from specific users. Or you can query the tweet user's relations. So let's search tweet. So it drags operator here. OK. And let's 
disable this um, operator. And right now you can see we have an exclamation mark because we don't have a connection yet. So because we need to authorize right minute and we choose predefined because we don't have anything that saved in our current repository. And we don't have any connection yet. So let's click Twitter. Um, and let's edit this connection. So we request a token. And it will open a URL from your browser. So you have to had you need to have a Twitter account first and then they'll ask you to log in with your Twitter account and they will get the access token. Okay. So now I already logged into my Twitter account and I can authorize this app. So you have to need a Twitter account first. And once you authorize the app, you will have those tokens. And you can copy those tokens and copy that one and paste. And you can test. And that's great. And you can save the change. We just call it new connection. So when, once again, you can choose a new con connection. And here you can define the keywords that you want to query from tweet. Uh, let's say we want to query about GMU. And you can choose do you want most the most recent tweet, the most popular tweet, or the most recent and also popular. So let's choose a popular tweet. And then you can see that the number of tweets that you want, so the default is 100. Uh, so let's just use the default. And since ID and maximum ID, uh, so that basically defines that from which time period that you want to collect tweets. And also English uh, language, do you want uh, in specific language like English? And also do you want to collect tweets in specific areas? Okay. Okay, so that's for the tweet operator. Um, and now let's connect that one to our result. And let's write. Okay, it worked. Uh, it does not collect uh, 100 tweets, but it just collect uh, 15 tweets. That's fine considering this is a, a free tool. Okay. And we can also save that one to our, uh, to save the data. So let's say we save. Okay. And we want to give it a name, so we call it tweets. Okay, remember that now we are going to write again, so that means we are going to collect a different set of new tweets, and those tweets will be saved into our local repository in a format that um, RapidMinder can recognize. Okay, so let's write again. Okay, so this time we still have 15 tweets. And um, I'm not sure what the tweets might be different. Okay. Uh, so now you can see we have the tweets that collected and also now it's saved in our in our lab one folder. All right, so that is collecting tweets. Let's uh, disable that one. Uh, next, let's see we we also can extract data from web pages. So that is also very powerful. So, but to do that, we need to install an extension. Okay. So we need to install an extension. Um, before, in, because every time when we install extension, the right minute will restart. So let's save our repository first. Okay. So you can save the process. So let's save our process and our data is already saved. And now, and then let's go to the extension. Uh, let's go to the marketplace, sorry. So this is where you can um, download the different extensions. You can see text processing is the top one. Uh, and also uh, web mining is also installed. Actually, by default, it was installed. OK. Mm. But just in case you don't have that one, you can install that one from this 
extension. And, and also you can find out those top rated extensions and pay attention that some of those extensions are not free. So you need to uh, type your username and also you need to buy those extensions. And if you are not sure what extension you are going to use, so for example, if you cannot find those extension from top downloads, okay, and you can search that one. So we are going to find out a wipe mining. So we select that one, and we want to install that one. And actually, let's say we want to install this and also this as well. Okay, we want to install text processing, operate a toolbox, and, and also web mining, all three together. Okay. And let's install those three package. Okay, so you need to read the license and you have to accept those license. Uh, if, that, if you already have those installed, you can just ignore this process. However, if you don't have those installed, uh, let's install that one here. Okay, and now they ask, okay, so the installation uh, to be installed, you have to restart. Do you want to re restart now? Uh, I say yes, because I already saved my process. If you haven't received, you, you should say no and then save your process first. Okay, so let's restart my Rapid Miner. Okay, uh, so now my Rapid Miner has re restarted and you can see that the repository we just created and now if you open lab one folder you can see we have the excel file we have the data that we saved into rapid mining format and if you double click this process and you can see your previous operators the process is still is already is still here uh, so if you go to the extensions and manage extensions so let's say we check those extensions And I need to restart it again. Okay. Okay, that was not expected. <laughs> okay, so now you can see the web mining is here. Okay, uh, so let's again let's open our uh, process and let's drag the get page to our process. Or you can also try crawler web pages, a web, um, if you know how to use that one. So that will be pretty cool. Let's see, we get page. And the, the only required parameter is a URL. So from which uh, URL you want to get that page. Uh, so let's try to collect data from our GME website. Okay. And now we want to see the output in our result window. And you can also customize the other parameters. And let's try it. Okay, cool. Um, so now we can see those are the extracted source code. Uh, so by default, we have the HTML code. So if you know HTML code, you will see that. Okay, so that is the front page of your GME website. However, so you may want to just extract the visible part. So that means um, the part that uh, is visible to human beings. So we can do that as well. So if you go to the HTML processing, and you can see that we have this one extract, extract content. So let's put that one here and attach to this link. Okay, so that means that we just added one more operator in this process. So the output from the get page will be throw into this extract content operator and the output of the extract content will go to our um, result window. And if you click this extract extract content and you can see here there are a lot of other uh, options like uh, do you want to neglect the p tags, b tags, br tags, span tags, etc. So those will require some uh, some solid knowledge of the HTML. So let's check everything. 
just leave that as default. And now let's draw it. OK, great. Uh, so now you can see that the result is, is better. So although there's still an iframe tag that is still there, uh, but you can see they just extracted the, the, uh, the visible part from the web, website. Okay, and you can also try different uh, URLs, for example, the, the, your, the URL from different news media, and you can extract those uh, information and also into your uh, local repository. Okay, so finally, let's save the data. So let's save the HTML code. And we want to save that one to our current folder. So let's call it JMU page. Okay. And that just run it. Okay. And now you can see the JMU page is now saved. And again, so if you disable the those operators and you just drag that one and link that one to the result window, and you can see that this is a saved uh, JMU web page.